Hey guys, this is your pharmacist Sidra and welcome to Pharmacy Tech Study Guide. In today's video, I'm going to talk about syringes. A very common question I get asked by my technicians all the time is what type, size, gauge or length of syringe needle they should be using in different scenarios. And for most techs, it's a very intimidating topic. So in this video, I'm going to talk about everything you need to know about syringes while working in a retail pharmacy. So stay tuned. So first of all, let's talk about what's a syringe. A syringe is equipped with a needle, nozzle or tubing that helps direct the flow of medication. The basic parts of syringe are the barrel, plunger and the tip. Now barrel is the cylindrical part of a syringe that holds fluid to be injected or the fluid that has been withdrawn. It opens up at one end and tapers into the hollow tip at the other end. The plunger is a piston type rod with a slightly cone shaped tip that passes inside the barrel of the syringe and your plunger should be able to move freely throughout the syringe barrel yet its surface must be so close and intact with the barrel that no fluid should pass in between even under considerable amount of pressure. Then we have the tip of the syringe which provides the point of attachment for the needle. Now the size of the needle is what confuses a lot of people but first we're going to talk about several different kinds of syringes like we have oral syringes, we have slip tip, lure lock. These are some of the common ones that you will see in the retail pharmacy setting. That's the main focus of my pharmacy tech lectures. So uh, let's first talk about the oral syringes. Now, as the name indicate, these are only meant to be used by mouth and they're often used in small children or for animals to deliver drugs directly into the mouth. And by definition, an oral syringe is a measuring instrument that's used to accurately measure doses of liquid medications which are expressed in milliliters, the short form is ml. And when you dispense liquid medications in pharmacy, it's very, very important that for correct dosing, you dispense an oral syringe. Another tip I would say is that for the safety of the patient on the prescription label, you don't want to say or type take one tablespoon or a teaspoonful of medication because that will literally encourage the patients to use like a tablespoon or a teaspoon from their kitchen, which could be actually uh, dangerous and also may give inappropriate doses. So you always want to write the specific dose on the prescription label like you should say take 5 ml or 10 ml or whatever the specific dose is and then provide an oral syringe accordingly especially for uh, children's medications to ensure proper dosing. Next let's talk about slip tip syringes. These syringes use the friction to hold the needle onto the syringe and the needle is reasonably secure I would say but it may slip off if not uh, properly attached or if considerable pressure is used and there is no locking function on this uh, type of syringe. Here on the screen you can see the slip tip syringes. Basically if you're looking for speed of connection between the needle and the syringe when they're put together then slip tip syringe would be the best because it helps save time. Uh, these are sterile and can be used for both intramuscular and subcutaneous injections. Now these syringes are convenient but they're not really secure and if you are looking for a secure needle and syringe connection then you want to use a lure lock syringe and here is the picture of lure lock syringe and you can see on the screen that this syringe has a threaded tip so that the needle can be twisted and locked into place and because of that twist and lock mechanism it really assures a secure connection that really prevents any accidental removal of a needle when uh, injecting a medication. Now it also offers clear visual and literally like an audible confirmation of the locked mechanism and is really secure and also sterile and this needle and syringe can also be used for um, IM or sub -Q inject injections. Now before I move on to the sizes of the syringes I want to quickly talk about the eccentric and catheter syringes although they are not used in retail pharmacies but you may come across them in hospital and clinical setting so let's talk about them a little bit. 
The eccentric syringes are commonly used while administering medications parallel to the skin of the patient and they are mainly used for the aspiration of fluids that require closeness to the skin. The catheter syringes come with a tapered tip which forms a tight seal. Uh, in appearance, I would say they are similar to the slip tip category but with longer and more tapered tip. Catheter tip syringes are used for cleaning catheters. When injecting via tubing, they also help flushing wounds or when a slip tip needle that is too large to use with a standard uh, slip tip syringe. All right, now that you know uh, different types of syringes, let's talk about what type of syringe you want to use or how to pick uh, the syringe. The type and size of syringe you choose depends on your requirements. For example, how much liquid uh, needs to be transferred or injected and what is the type of consistency or viscosity of your medication, like whether it's very watery like insulins or you're injecting very thick viscous liquids like uh, your vitamin b12 injection or testosterone they're both very viscous also you want to keep in mind whether you're injecting a medication to the muscle or it's a sub q injection like going under the skin it's important to choose the right size of the needle and syringe so you can get the right dose of the medication now having the right size also makes the injection easier and less painful for the patient now let's talk about the syringe size the syringes are labeled based on how much liquid they can hold and there are two ways to measure uh, their capacity or volume and that's in milliliters for liquid volume and cubic centimeters which is cc for the volumes of solids so whenever you're selecting a syringe and needle for your patient you have to keep into consideration what dose of the medication the patient is injecting and how the patient is injecting it so let's talk about an example if your patient is supposed to inject 3 cc of a drug which is 3 ml of the drug you would want to use a syringe that holds exactly 3 cc or just a little bit more and if you use a syringe that can hold only 2 cc the patient would have to inject more than once right that's extra pain and inconvenience to the patient for no good reason right and so you don't want to do that now on the other hand in the same scenario where a patient is still dosed at 2 cc you provide the patient with the syringe that holds 15 cc and that's a big no as well and the reason being that it's going to make it harder for the patient to see the uh, ml markings or the cc markings and the patient may easily end up injecting too little or too much of the medication so here there is a risk of dosing errors all right now that you have picked the right syringe size for the patient it's now time to pick the right needle size the needle sizes are basically the length of the needle which is measured in inches normally the needle length ranges from 3 8 of an inch to three and a half of an inch and some specially used needles are even longer now length represents how long the needle is while the gauge of the needle really designates the diameter of the needle or the size of the lumen it ranges from 27 which is the smallest to 13 which is the largest size in terms of gauge and for insulin syringes the gauge of the needle ranges from 31 which being the smallest to 29 gauge that being the largest now the gauges might be very confusing to understand but a simple tip to remember is smaller the gauge of the needle thicker would be the needle lumen or the diameter of the needle and larger the gauge thinner the needle would be again i repeat higher the gauge thinner would be the needle now selecting the needles by gauge size occurs by considering the uh, skin thickness or you can also consider the depth of the injection larger diameter gauges have thicker needle walls but on a positive note they are stronger and more durable and they can be used for uh, medications which are very viscous and also for people who have denser skin and a deeper penetration is required for their uh, medication injections 
So in that case, you want to select a lower gauge number. For example, if you're injecting testosterone or vitamin B12 injection, now these injections are very viscous. So in that case, if you use a small gauge or a smaller diameter needle, uh, you won't have any success because the medication itself is so viscous that it won't be able to pass through the fine needles and the patient won't be able to inject the medication. Now, on the other hand, if the patient is injecting insulin, which has very water-like consistency, if you want to use a higher gauge from 29 to 31 and a smaller length needle. And the reason being, uh, insulin has a very low viscosity and it goes under the skin. So you don't need a bigger length needle as that would be more painful and also it will not deliver the medication on the right layer of the skin. Now, just like choosing the right gauge, choosing the right length of the needle is very important. Uh, standard needles vary in length from 3 8 of an inch to 3 and a half inch and the location of the administration really determines what length needle you need. Another thing to keep in mind uh, while making the best choice will depend on the person's size. A small child would need a shorter needle compared to an adult and also uh, where you're inserting the needle also matters. You know, some medications can be absorbed just under the skin while others need to be injected into the muscle. So for instance, if you're injecting a subcutaneous uh, injection, which goes under the skin, it just goes right into the fatty tissues just which is which lies just below the skin it doesn't has to go any deeper than that so therefore your subcutaneous shots are fairly shallow and the needle that's required for such an injection should be small and short typically i would say a one half to a five eighth of an inch long needle with a gauge of i would say 25 to 30 would be ideal in this scenario now, if you're injecting intradermal injection, that would require a needle length of 3 8 or 3 4 of an inch. I want to say half to 5 8 inch of a needle are the mo two most common needle lengths that can be used for both intradermal and subcutaneous injections. While if you're injecting intramuscularly, then you need a longer needle because the intramuscular injections go straight into the muscle and muscles are deeper than the skin, so the needle used for these shots must be thicker and also longer. Now, generally speaking, the further the depth of the injection, the longer the needle would be. And that's why intramuscular injections require extended needle lengths. I would say the needle lengths for IM injection would be usually one to one and a half inch and needle gauge would be 20 or 22 gauge. Now you must also keep into consideration that how much of a body fat the needle has to go through. If you're injecting into a thin person, then you might be able to use just an inch long needle and someone who is heavier, then they might need a needle that is inch and a half long uh, when you're doing an IM injection. I think the needle length is not what confuses a lot of people. The needle gauge is what confuses people. So for your convenience, here on the screen, I have summarized the gauge ranges for different types of injections. If your patient is needing an intradermal injection, then the best gauge range would be 26 to 28. For intramuscular injections, 26 to 30 is a good range. And for subcutaneous injections, uh, you want to stay in the gauge range of 19 to 27. And if you're working in a pharmacy where you have a limited choice of gauges to choose from, then staying in the gauge range of 26 to 27 is safe because that provides an overlap between all three injection types. And here on this slide are some important key points in remembering needle gauge. Uh, you can definitely take a screenshot of this slide. Make sure you remember these key points and have them on your fingertips. And if you do that, I promise uh, you will never be intimidated when making a selection of the right needle size for your patient. I hope you found this lecture helpful. If you have any questions or lecture recommendations, feel free to drop them in the comments. And to all my pharmacy techs watching, remember you're a true asset of any pharmacist and pharmacy. Keep up the good work and I'll see you next time with another lesson on pharmacy tech study guide. Until then, take care. Bye.